Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Glory Pensra and once again I bring you this tutorial where I'll be teaching you how to make a box pleated dress. Just like you can see on the screen, we'll begin with the bodies, then we'll go into insertion of the sleeve and then we'll go into the skirt part of the dress. This dress has a petticoat underneath that is the lining carries two layers of mats this is quite a detailed trading we'll try our best to keep it short but stay focused and don't forget to subscribe please note that this measurement belongs to a teenage girl of about 12 years old i made a quick illustration here if you love it please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so let's begin the pattern has already been made as you can see. Please turn on the notification bell so you will be notified when I make a post on how to make an accurate bodice block. To cut, the fabric has been placed on fold and then the pattern will be aligned with the fold at the center front edge, just as you can see. So we'll place our pattern and we'll pin it all the way round and we will cut. We would cut adding half an inch allowance at the neck the shoulder, the armhole, the waistline, but one inch allowance would be added to the side seams. We're going to cut the back as well. Please take note that the center back is not placed on fold because we're going to add one inch zip allowance to the center back. Everywhere else is half an inch except at the center back, as you can see, and the side seams. Notice that we have a side dart on the front pattern, but we do not have a waist dart. So now I'm going to quickly teach you how to transfer your dart from pattern to fabric. So first you use a pin like I did, insert it into the eye of the dart till it passes through to the back of the fabric. Then using your ruler, you're going to notch the dart leg on your fabric. Just as you can see, really beautiful, nicely done. Okay, so next we are going to leave a mark at the eye of the pin. We leave it at the back, just as you can see, using a chalk, and then we'll lift up a paper on, by unpinning the pins all around the side. We'll lift up the paper, careful not to remove the pin at the eye of the needle, as you can see. Then we would leave another mark there. Okay, so we take off our paper. Using a ruler, we'll connect the two dart legs, which are represented by the notch to the um, dart eye. And we have a dart on the left hand side and the dart on the right hand side. So we went ahead to cut the lining for the bodies exactly the same way as we cut the bodies and we also transferred the darts. We're going to be using this cutting lining for the preparation of the petticoats. So the lining is 73 inches in width and 22 inches in length. We would also be needing this hardness for our petticoats so we can have a desired fullness or kick, as some people would say. So we're going to fold the um, hardness, just as you've seen, into several layers, just for the ease of cutting. And then we're going to cut seven inches in length of the hardness. We'll cut several layers of 7 inches of net. We have a lining ready now. So I'm going to show you how we fix the hard net on the lining. So that's the waistline of the lining as you can see. And 8 inches downwards from the waistline of the lining is where we are going to be fixing our hard net. So when I did this video, I initially wanted to fix one layer of hard net. 
but later on i changed my mind and made it a two layer of hardness as you would get to see later so at the eight inches mark of um the lining we are going to pleat our hardness watch and learn so i left one inch away from the side of the lining because that one inch is going to go into the zip allowance and it's usually very ugly when you have your when you have hard nets going into the zip allowance so would we'll free up that one inch for the zip allowance we'll pleat our hard net all the way around um the lining at eight inches mark away from the waistline there you can see what the pleat looks like really beautiful i made a one inch pleat all the way around at the eight inches mark from the waistline of the lining to form our particles we'll go to the machine and we'll stitch up at that eight inches mark also at the waistline we are going to pull gathers bringing the lining to the waist circumference of the owner of these clothes here is our petticoat. Like I said earlier on, we had plans to make it a one step, but changed our mind and made it a two step hard net petticoat instead. Our petticoat is ready. Look how nice it looks. It's already looking full, so so full and gorgeous. Spots the gathers at the waistline. Now, note that from the waistline to the first step of the net is three inches and then from the waistline to the second step of the net is eight inches so to our bodies we started by fixing and interfacing around the neckline of both the main fabric and the lining after which we went to the sewing machine and we begun sewing a dart just as you can see we held the dart on the lining and the dart on the main fabric. Then placing the lining and the fabric together at the neckline, right side to right side, we are going to turn the neckline. Now watch closely how we are going to make that V, the slit at the center front neck, very sharp. Then we'll sew around the curve of the neck. Next, we're going to notch round the neck. Now, usually, anytime you have any curve, you would want to free up that curve with a notch so it can relax when ironing. Notice also at the center front neck towards the slit, we also notched. Okay, so we'll turn it to the right side, as you can see. So we headed to the ironing board to iron. Please watch closely how to properly iron a neckline. I'm sorry we had to speed up this video, else the video would be so long and we would not be able to upload it on YouTube. However, the picture is very clear and you can see clearly what is going on there. I just had to show you this how to iron because I've noticed that most tailors or dressmakers do not know how to properly iron. Hope you learned something.
So back to the sewing machine, we are going to join the side seam of the fabric by one inch separately from the side seam of the lining, which was also joined by one inch. We would also join the sh um, shoulder seams together by half an inch. To prepare the sleeves, we would have to measure round the curve of the armhole, ignoring the 0.5 sewing allowance we added to the shoulders and to the side seam 1 inch. So there we have 7.5 inches. Now we are going to draft a pattern for the cap sleeve. The length of our sleeve is 4 inches down. So on the paper, we pick the point and place our tape zero and marked four inches down. On the four inches mark, we are going to mark her bicep circumference, which is 13, divided by two to give 6.5. Now watch how I made the curve, very easy. Very, very easy. Keep the curve flattened at the cap and then down to the um, bicep mark. That's the easiest way to do a cap sleeve. Now I added one inch um, seam allowance on the side there and 0 0.5 inch hemming allowance at the hem of the sleeve and that's it I'm going to cut we're going to cut the two sleeves at the same time so therefore we um, folded our fabric into four and then we placed our pattern on the fabric with the center of the pattern on the folded line and we're going to cut. So we've cut the sleeve. We're going to use this now as a pattern to cut the lining for the sleeve as well. So this is the fabric for the skirt part of our dress which we are going to box split. This edge here would be the center back edge at which we have kept a one inch zipper allowance. Now from that one inch mark we are going to mark three inches inward and from the three inches mark we are going to mark another three inches inward. So we'll keep going three inches, three inches all the way towards the center front of this fabric that goes to tell you that i've placed my fabric on fold the width of this fabric is 103 inches and my table is not that wide to carry 103 inches yeah so to make our box split we are going to pick the first marking there which is right after the zip allowance make a fold just as i'm doing skip the second marking where my fingers are and move it over to the third marking right i'm going to take it again okay so that's the first marking after the zip allowance at center back i'll make a fold skip the second marking and take my fold over to the third mark to make the second pleat i would skip that particular mark and pick the next mark make a fold there over to kiss the first pleat that we are done hence the name kiss pleat like some people would call it but in essence on the right side of the fabric we actually have a box pleat formed So we'll keep making these splits all the way through.
we're done making our pleats just as you can see right so towards the waistline we are going to have to confirm that this pleat is accurate ignoring one inch on both ends of the fabric which is our um, zip allowance we would measure to make sure this fits into our client's waist which is 33 inches i'm sorry we didn't have this on camera the fixing of the lace trimming around the waistline however we fixed it into the side seam just as you can see leaving 0.5 inch away from the waistline so we can use that 0.5 to attach the bodies to the skirts that has been done now you can see the joining and also the bridal petticoat was attached to the lining so first we're going to hold the one inch allowance we had kept for the side seam of the sleeve then we're going to fit the sleeve into the armhole and then sew around the sleeve Finally, we installed the zip to this dress and then we ironed it neatly and our dress is ready. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and also do not forget to turn on the notification bell so you would always get more useful tutorials from me like this.